David Starr here with another episode of On Guitars. As you can see, I'm playing a big old hollow body jazz box and it's making a lot of noise. So let me turn this amp down. Okay. If you know anything about old Gibson guitars and mandolins, you no doubt know the name Lloyd Lore. Lloyd Lore was instrumental, pun, instrumental in uh, working with Gibson in the early years to develop uh, their instrument line, and in particular, a uh, mandolin, an old Gibson mandolin with uh, Lloyd Lore's name on the label is worth a lot of money. Um, so in the business, there's a lot of lore surrounding lore, if I may continue my puns. This particular guitar has the lore name on it, but it's made uh, via the Music Link, which is a company out in California that imports and uh, sells instruments under various names. Recording King is one, Lore is another. They acquired the Lore name to use as a trade name several years ago. What's that got to do with me? A few years back, they were making this guitar offshore, China, and they were doing a good job of it, and we sold a few of them in my shop. But one day they let us know they were gonna build some in the States um, using U.S. components, U.S. finishing work, not really sure where the body and neck were made. Don't know, guess it doesn't matter. Uh, but it was done in such a way that it was a made in the USA instrument. So um, I thought to myself, I gotta have one of those. So I ordered one and a long, long time went by. And uh, I began to think and they began to think maybe it wasn't gonna get done and it wasn't a priority and that sourcing all that work was going to be more uh, difficult than they had originally thought. Fast forward, maybe a year went by, maybe more. Um, seemed like a long time. They called and said, hey, this guitar is done. Do you want it, really? Because um, it wasn't cheap. It was a lot more than, than their uh, imported stuff. And I said, well, yeah, I do. Um, you know, I've committed to it, and I wanted it. And uh, so I took it only to find out after a while they weren't going to do any more of them because it just wasn't feasible for them as a company to keep that um, that project going. So here we are, the only one in existence made in the States, the Lore Model 33, fashioned after uh, the Gibson ES-125. So let's talk about this guy. Solid spruce top, um, beautiful maple back and sides. I love flame maple. Uh, this particular one also has beautiful flame maple neck with a V profile. Nice cream binding all around. Um, Lawler Charlie Christian pickup. Uh, really just a P90 pickup with a different look to it. Um, but it came became synonymous with Charlie Christian's sound. Uh, and you know, I, I got online the other day when I was thinking about doing this episode and watched some Charlie Christian stuff. I'd forgotten. What a great player. Anyway, do yourself a favor and go back and listen to some of the Charlie Christian uh, stuff. Trapeze tailpiece, um, ebony floating bridge and saddle. Really nice cream knobs. Everything about this was done first class. Now I will say, they were unhappy with the finish when it got done. Um, if you were able to look very, very closely, there's a spot or two that there's some, what they call pitting, and I'm not a finish guy, but I get what that is. It's like the finish just didn't finish right. So they weren't pleased with it, knocked a little off the price. I was happy about that. Beautiful, heavy tortoise, uh, uh, faux tortoise guard with binding. So the whole thing is very, very first class, real Waverly binding, uh, Waverly uh, tuners, and bound on binding on the headstock. So um, everything about it turned out great in my opinion, and it was well worth, uh, well worth what they charged me for it. And they gave me a deal because of that finish issue. There wasn't an issue for me. Um, when I turned the amp off earlier, or turned it down, uh, it had to do with the fact that this pickup hums a lot. Um, single coil pickups hum. This particular building 
isn't grounded all that well. It was built in 1906 and being redone several times. There are spots in the building where the grounding is better than others. This apparently isn't one of them. But uh, this is a guitar that doesn't get played very much because when I originally brought it in, it was just going to be to hang in the store for someone to buy. Um, and it hung there for a month or so, and then I was notified that they weren't going to make any more of them. And I thought, well, that just became a little more special uh, for that reason. So I've kind of had it, I had it in the case for a long, long time. Didn't forget about it, but just put it to the side, uh, as sometimes happens um, in your day-to-day -day stuff. You just put things away and, and let them sit. Um, for the last couple of years, I've had it upstairs here in my, uh, in my shop, hanging with its friends, and uh, thought it would be fun to, uh, to get it out and talk about it. Um, it's, it's not oddball in the way it looks or anything, but it's oddball in that it's the only one they made in their U.S. collection that just never happened after that. And so I wanted to include it as a sort of a one-of-a-kind instrument. I've got a lot of other one-of-a-kind not a lot, a few one-of-a-kind instruments that are really unique, and we're going to be talking about those in coming episodes. So thank you for tuning in. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to uh, YouTube, go over there and click that little bell, and it's going to send you a note whenever we put a new uh, episode up. My team and I are working hard to keep these, uh, these episodes interesting. We keep them coming up frequently, two or three times a week. want you to be entertained. want you to learn about guitars. Thank you for the feedback you've been sending me on uh, what you like, what you'd like to see more of. Um, no end to the guitars, and we're going to keep talking about them. So I'm going to turn the amp on, play you back out, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for checking in. See you next time.